nothing. And I feel you've done nothing. <laughs> to help me. <laughs> to help me. So, as of this September the 2nd, the September the second. I'm gonna trust that you will reveal yourself to me. I'm gonna trust that you will reveal yourself to me. Sounds real genuine, GC. Hi all. Hope you all had a great Labor Day weekend. Today I wanted to have a look at a video sent to me by the number three via Twitter that explores original sin or why we're supposedly all being punished for Adam's sin. Let's get into it. Why didn't we each get the chance to originally obey or sin like Adam did? It seems unfair that we had no original choice and had to inherit his sin. Not that we necessarily would have done it differently than Adam, but we didn't even get an opportunity. Well, it does sound like a dick move on God's part. If this wasn't being introduced as a religious concept, most people would immediately realize how unethical and stupid such a punishment would be. We don't punish the offspring of criminals, and we certainly wouldn't punish their future descendants throughout time for the wrongs their great-great-great-great-grandfathers might have committed. It seems strange that a deity would do so, since any deity worth the name should realize that I'm not responsible for what someone long dead did during their lifetime. It's a pretty simple concept to grasp, and it doesn't take a moral philosopher to realize the entire idea is completely mad. Yeah, and I'm really bummed out. I wasn't born to grow to be six foot five inches so I could slam dunk a basketball forwards and backwards. I'm really bummed out. I wasn't born with a brain like Albert Einstein. We're not talking about genetic differences. We're talking about punishing someone for the crimes of their ancestors. Do you not see the difference between someone or something meeting out a punishment for what someone else did, and the genetic environmental factors that determine your height? You're right. Obviously, we're not all born equal, other than equal value. This might be nitpicking, but what do you mean by value? I'd agree that we all have shared human rights that we've agreed upon, but that doesn't mean I would necessarily value everyone the same. It just means I try to accord everyone the same baseline of respect in human rights. Anything beyond that is earned. Would you seriously consider John Wayne Gacy, who killed 33 boys and young men, equal in value to someone like Albert Einstein? I know I wouldn't, unless you're using the very narrow definition of value that only includes the baseline of human rights accorded all human beings. We all have equal value. We do not all have equal opportunity. We do not all have equal talents. That's true, but imagine for a moment that you're all powerful. Wouldn't you create a world where everyone has the potential, but are free to pick and choose what subjects or areas they wish to pursue? Wouldn't that be a step up from a world where some people are born naturally gifted, while others are born only to die within moments of their birth? I mean, what we see now looks exactly like the world you'd expect to see if there were no all-knowing, all-powerful deity pulling the strings. But if a being like that existed, wouldn't you think a world where everyone has the same potential for human flourishing would at least be preferable to the one you experience now? And you're right. Adam and Eve were given a sinless nature. They chose to rebel against God. I was definitely not born with a sinless nature. If they were born with a sinless nature, why did they sin? That makes no sense whatsoever. You'd think if sinning wasn't in their nature, they would have no problem not sinning. Not sinning would come naturally to them. And if this God is all-knowing and all-good, why would it create Adam and Eve and put the tree there, knowing what would happen? Uh, not so fast, Jeffrey. First, I want to uh, put a tree of knowledge down there in the Garden of Eden. Tree of knowledge, Shaw? Uh, what's that do? Oh, it'll fuck everything up royally. Big time. Well, why would you put that there? I thought you wanted these people to love you. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be funny to watch them fuck up, won't it? When I was a little kid, I walked out of the supermarket. I had never seen this behavior modeled. I reached out in the checkout line, grabbed a pack of candy, put it in my pocket, and kept right on, right on walking. I was born a thief. It came very naturally to me. I didn't have to learn it. I was born with a sinful nature. Lots of animals steal. Take, for example, the scorpion fly, who will steal gifts of food from spider webs for the females of their species so they can mate. Some of the males will even pretend to be females and use the gifts given to them by other males as gifts to females for the privilege of mating. Sneaky. Are they also sinful? There are a number of reasons why people steal. It's not a mystery and we're far from alone in the animal kingdom as far as the urge to steal goes. You were likely filled with a sense of excitement when you stole that candy which released pleasurable endorphins. Some people steal out of necessity, and you can easily think of a reason where stealing might be necessary for survival. 
But I think the bottom line is that if you believe we were born with a sinful nature, you must also confront the idea that it was your God that created you so, with the knowledge of what you would do before you were even born. All right, Adam and Eve were not created with a sinful nature, but they chose to rebel against God. Once again, the decisions that we freely make have ramifications, have consequences that go down through the years, go down through the generations, and affect other people. Sure, that's true. But again, we're not talking about a genetic factor or something beyond our control. We're talking about a punishment supposedly handed down to us because of the actions of a distant ancestor. We're talking about a presumably conscious God who made that decision and chose to punish you for what your distant relative did thousands of years ago. In other words, we're talking about a very stupid God or a malevolent one. When you look at the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of a man like Jonathan Edwards, the great American Puritan preacher, it's amazing the powerful impact those children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren had on American culture and society. Many of them were university presidents. Many of them were professors and teachers. Many of them were ministers. The godly heritage that Jonathan Edwards passed down was amazing. Edwards also owned slaves. Do you think that all of his children and their children and their children and so forth should be punished because he owned slaves? Or would you admit that him owning slaves has nothing to do with them and everything to do with Edwards himself, who later renounced the practice, and the social norms and ethical thinking of the day? It seems obvious to me that people should be held accountable for their actions, and not the actions of their forebears. Yet your god somehow didn't figure that out, or didn't care that you had no say over what Adam chose to do, yet decided it was fitting to punish you for it anyways. In addition, why the fruit in the garden? I think Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther actually addresses this issue very well, which is to say that all sin is idolatry. Idolatry being making something else God, making something else ruler, making ourselves subject to anything other than the ways of God. So all sin is choosing to make something else more important than the ways of God. How is not obeying God idolatry? According to your own words, Idolatry being making something else God. And you're right to say that. That's the common definition of idolatry when used in reference to religion. Why would we confuse people by calling sin idolatry, when we already have words that describe not obeying God's word, sin, and worshipping an idol as if it were God? Idolatry. All of us do that in different ways. That could be as trivial as you can't eat that fruit, which actually is a sin that resonates with me because if there's a plate of cookies in front of me, I have a very hard time not eating one, right? Um, right, so if I were a god and knew beforehand that if I placed a plate of cookies in front of you and told you not to eat it, that you would eat it anyways, what sort of god would that make me? Why would I place that plate of cookies there in the first place? And yet that's a trivial sin. <laughs> I love how he calls it trivial, yet somehow believes that it's a sin worthy of punishing every human being born since. Unbelievable. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers.